I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. This week in The Rough Draft Diaries, we are talking to Christine Diemer. My day-to-day consists of working full-time, four days a week, for the Sylvania Sisters of St. Francis. And on the weekends, between volunteering at other art organizations and making time for myself in the studio and time for family, that's pretty much who I am. Christine has been working for the Sylvania Sisters of St. Francis for just about two years. She's their art curator. Well, as the art curator, I'm truly their art manager. Um, It's when I get to switch over to um, my left brain. I'm basically cataloging their art collection that's never officially been cataloged and or things move, things get produced. If you've ever been on Lord's campus, you'll see the um, Sister Jane Mary ceramic murals and all that stuff. So it's all getting recorded at this time for the first time. It's more spreadsheets and uh, cataloging right now. Now, if you would ask me where I thought the most exclusive collection of Renaissance art was housed in Toledo, my first answer would probably not be a local convent. And Christine completely understands this surprise. The Sisters of Sylvania came in 1916, and their uh, founder's mother, Adelaide, was an artist herself. And this isn't a direct quote, but basically, if you sh- surround yourself with art, you'll be a creative and artistic person. And they have a dozen active artists, sisters on campus that create art every day. Um, they have Alver- Alverno Studios that has four kilns and they're <laughs> they're doing ceramics daily. Sister Jane Mary is 91 this year and it gets up every morning, goes to mass, goes to the studio, comes home and does it all over again. So that's amazing and inspirational right there. Um, this is a convent and While they were building, Mother Adelaide went and found um, European art and brought it back and and installed it. I mean, we're talking ceramic Della Robbia's placed into the walls. Some people, students of Lourdes University, get to see and know about it, but it's a convent. And in awe in the history of the convent, men, public, didn't come into the convent. So, no, there is no advertising going on, and um, they they are okay with that. On top of archiving artwork, Christine also creates it. Typically, she's worked with oil and acrylics, but just recently she discovered the artwork of encaustics. It's beeswax and tree resin mixed together, heated to 180 degrees, and that's your medium. That's the water of your watercolor. And then you add natural pigments, i.e., oil pigments. You can use an oil pastel, oil paints. The Vikings used to repair their ships with this uh, same encaustics. Uh, Egyptians used to paint the um, portrait on the sarcophagus of the dead, um, and it just lasts forever. It's been around since 100 AD. Of course, it comes and goes in popularity. So if you look, you will find encaustic artists. Christine found and fell in love with this style of art recently when she moved here to Perrysburg. She's originally from Southern California, then she moved to Colorado, then she moved to Idaho, then to the Netherlands, then to Arizona, then to the Midwest, Perrysburg. Throughout all her travels, the one constant has been artwork, whether archiving it or creating it herself. Because of this, Christine brings fresh but experienced eyes to the art world here in our area. Because every time we moved, I tapped into the art community, whether it was an art center or a museum, and that's the only cultural fine art displays. I was, I'm surprised by some cities and how big they are and how small the, the art world is, but Toledo seems well-rounded in, in my surveillance, and there's many organizations you can tap into. Um, this community really understands and, and nurtures and supports the fine arts I just can't share how much it, it, it's rewarding to teach yourself and to learn about collections in this whole area, to include TNA and TFAS and the Art Toledo Artist Club. I know I'm missing a ton of people, the, the women of uh, Athena Art Society. It's, there's so much history in this area that all you have to do is just ca- tap in, join an organization of any, and... Um, really start to grow 
and see what you can lend to the community in the arts field. Christine's willingness and motivation to get tapped in and connected with the arts community has been one of the greatest gifts she feels like she has received so far since she's moved here. It's an honored place of perspective in regards to the artists and the art housed and created in Northwest Ohio. I get kind of this extra understanding in art history of this area and because I'm not from here and a native in the last five, six years, it's it's wonderful to get caught up quicker. I don't know how one person could do that if they were to move here tomorrow and, and go, okay, I'm interested in the arts and the arts in the area. How, you know, where's the book? <laughs> and so um, the history, art history book in the area, but uh, I kind of, there's definitely an opportunity for a coffee table book <laughs> in this area and their art. It's, it's just, it's so wonderful. I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks for listening to this episode of The Rough Draft Diaries.